there isn't a day that goes by that I thank my lucky stars I managed to get hold of this forgotten old clay pit. Honestly, everything about it, you know, it just, it just fills me with joy. It's the, it's the actual, I mean, I believe this is the original place in my heart of fishing. It's got everything that you ever wanted. It's not a bowl. It's not a commercial cutout. It's not rammed with certain fish, you know, and everything. Else. So it's not one in places that's had everything removed for one species. It's mixed. We've got big pike here, 20 plus. Big carp here, cutting around. Beautiful, beautiful little roach. But they're really fat and, you know, perfect. Really bright greens and blacks and red vibrant perch. And everything's healthy and it's balanced. It's a balanced ecosystem. And again, I do not... How come for me to get this lake was absolutely uh, just just purely by chance. I already run I was running UK angling, and yeah, as again, that's, uh, I'm really happy with that page. Although it's a little slow right now, it will pick back up. But anyway, I'm a tradesman by tra that's that's me. I'm a tradesman. I fit bathrooms for a living. You know, that's how I make my money. That's how I feed my family and look after my kids. Um, I was just working at a customer's house one day and we got talking. He had these old cane rods. Do you know the old whippity cane rods? Not just a standard rod and reel, but it's like a little centre pin reel. You know, the old cane rods. And it was just gently, gently balancing on, on the roof. And at the time, I was trying to start off with a company called Bait by the MK, which was it, it sort of half come and half, you know, I was it's in an office and I was trying to convert to a little tackle shop. And, you know, the dream we all have, but it doesn't just sometimes wasn't working out. Anyway, Rob, his name was. So I'm at Rob's house, and we're talking about fishing, talking about his um, the rods, and the, he goes, "Oh, um, Lisa's up for Dimux around the corner." And I'm like, "All right." He goes, "Yeah, lots of people, lots of people have tried, but no, no, no one's really been that successful. Company people have took it on, filled it with bricks, and done what they've done to it. Charged five pound a day ticket, not really put much effort into it. Um, thought it was a cash cow because of the size of it and the amount of work it needs doing. You can't just have it as a cash cow. You need to." You know, put work into it. And if you know the lake, it's it's hard. You can't get machinery around this place. It's near impossible. If you've got like uh, ledges and we've got these big overhanging trees, you know, the, the, not just a overhanging tree like a little willow. We're talking about where they're falling. The big thick bark. You can't grab your arms around it. It goes up and down like a big point. You know, and you know the thing that you see the squirrel living in, the thing that you see the um, the little birds flying around. You know, just them really picturesque, almost like I call. Alice in Wonderland tree, which absolutely suits this place, you would see. So anyway, so well, all right, it's up for lease then, Rob. And Rob's going, yeah, yeah. So what we did was we um, I started chasing the company, and it's actually under like an umbrella corporation originally. It was what it was under. Um, lots of ins and outs of who I've had to contact, but I started coming down in my very first peak at Dimmicks. I remember I used to come here as a kid with my uh, cousin Ray, and we'd sit down here on on a skinny bank. And my dad, my dad used to come down known for pike and tench at the time. You'd float, uh, flick your float out at the back of a reed line, which is now peg one. Um, and you, as one would throw one out, uh, the other would fire um, like little, little handfuls this week one. So what happens, a float would hit the wall, bosh. And just like roach would back, you know, roach do, as the, uh, you'd have no, no weight on the bottom shot. So as the cut or corn would flutter down like this, amongst the weed ever so slowly, someone else would fire more corn. So it'd do this. And what would happen in the tent would come in, Grab it, straight down, roared over, wham, away. That's what it used to do. And that's what I loved about it. That is what I loved about, about the lake. It's, it's brilliant. Anyway, so I was working at Rob's house. Rob's got to be leases up, leases up. So I've gone, all right. And uh, spoke to Powers of Beast. What I did was, uh, before I had the lease, I came down. So I made my way down to the lake. And what I did was I crept over the fence. Like you do. Everyone else is poaching it anyway. And, and it, it was just it was just masses and masses and masses of brambles. That's what it was, brambles. You know, not, not just standard brambles, you know, thick brambles, with massive points on it. It was the big brambles. So anyway, so me, uh, I've come down, I've, I've looked at it, I thought, All right, I need to get a lease on this place, I love it. So I managed to get through the bramble. There's a picture um, of kids, and we're cutting into the, we, we, where we first got a lease. And you'll see, it's thick, thick, thick with brambles. Anyway, so, I knew a bit about the lake. It was perfect. It's just what I wanted. So what I decided to do is I, I jumped over the fence before I, well, I was meant to be working. Uh, I've got to go rob them. Um, uh, I've got to collect materials. And I'm straight down here. Honestly, he thinks I'm going to get materials. I'm straight down this lake. I mean, I'm like a shot. I'm bam, I'm here. And I jumped over the fence. And it took me about five minutes just to literally weave through. So I was literally like in a safari. I was pushing left, 
machine right and just working through and come to the pit. It was overgrown, absolutely ridiculous. And the weed was so thick. I'm not even about it. It was thick. Uh, it was absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so I've then um, I've gone through the trees and as I'm just gently peering past trees, I'm seeing roach, loads of roach and rud. And you know, took that when you you, you you drop a pin on the floor and he'll go, he'll jump out. That was the kind of roach you were, and they were beautiful. Loads of them. I actually see a few dark shadows, and then along the back reed line where I used to fish for tench, they were just, just the reeds were just doing the splitting. You know, when something goes through and it sort of goes. It, it, it twitches ever so slightly and then splits and that's what it was doing and I was absolutely buzzing honestly I thought to myself right 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 I'm taking it I want this I want this no one else is having it I'm having it and and that was how it was and then um through about two years of emails texts follow-ups project planning everything put to the company that owned it the umbrella corporation they um finally let me have it I said, yeah, Mr. Escott, you can have it. You know, you, you've... And I said, right, right, great, right. What I'm going to do then, I had to then produce a plan. So I had to do a detailed plan of what I want to do, how I was going to achieve it, and how much it's going to cost me to achieve it. And it wasn't cheap, and it was a lot, a lot of time. And it was over three years, then another three years, then another three years. So it was doing this for over nine years in three years spats. Anyway, I've cracked on with it. Um, so now, I've like, I went home, time over off. Let me have it. I've got, I've got it. I finally got it. I finally got it. Call up my dad, 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 dad. Yeah? You remember that old manky old pit that no one likes? And dad's like, yeah. I said, yeah I'm the least. Look, and sent a picture of the least saying I'm the least here of it. And, you know, it, it was buzzing. And um, straight on social media, because I was doing UK angling, I was chatting to people. So I was straight on social media. I'm like, nah, I've got to mix. And it was mixed reviews. It was really, really mixed reviews. Some people were saying to me, Mark, yes, mate. Well done, buddy. You deserve it. Many people were saying the words of, you're wasting time, Mark. Fish are dead. The fish have been stolen. There's long lines in there. Pike have been nicked. The carp are all died in the freeze. It's a, Someone called it the shit pit. Someone said it was a waste of space, waste of money. I actually spoke to a couple of other people, and they were going to me, I don't want you wasting your time on that lake. It's, it's pointless. You're not going to achieve nothing from that lake. You are wasting your time, Mark. Give it up. Fuck it off. You are wasting your time. And then my heart has gone from up here and it sank. It sank straight through my arse and I felt absolutely terrible. I felt like I, I couldn't breathe, you know? And I went back down the lake. Felt a bit shit for what am I doing? And then I see them again. I see them fish. And I'll tell you what, I couldn't give two flying hoots who didn't think this lake could make it or who could, who, who did not care. But that, you know, I, I took it on. And that's sort of how I got the lake. And that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And the beginning was fun. So I needed to make this, for the first year, I needed to make this lake half fishable. Or well, just to make something of it, you know? My plan was right, to get a big syndicate together, get this together. So I had those plans, what I wanted to do. And it didn't all work out. But I sort of had an aim, an aim in my mind of what I wanted to do. So what I did, I've come down the lake again. I said to my wife, I've got this lake, you know, we'll come down. I thought, right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the first night on this forgotten old clay pit. This clay pit, I mean, you know, they used to dig for clay, obviously, in it, and it's still like kilns at the back, a bit broken down. Uh, you know, over time, I met a few of the guys that said, no, Mr. Dimmock owned it. My mate Dom's grandparents used to live here. So we've kept it as a Dimmock's pit. First thing we did, I went straight online, got it insured, got it registered. Two key points that had to be done. Insured, reg registered. So it's legal. Yeah, you can have lakes that aren't registered, that aren't legal still. People don't realise some lakes that you fish aren't insured. But this is insured and registered and legal. So I've done that. To first night, I've gone to Wimps Point. So I've, I've walked, battled through. And Wimps Point had to clear a sort of... It was quite late, so I've gone and set a little, little um, broadly system up. Yeah, that would do. Did not make... <laughs> didn't pay much attention. Gone there. Threw a little rod to one side. Uh, it was a size six wide gape hook. I used them quite a bit. A bit of bread, throw them around a the corner, and one straight out. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there, and uh, I've got my alarms on, all lined up. My fox is all lined up, bop, bop, bosh. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sort of just, you know, when you're just laying there, like dozing in your bed. You don't really pay much attention, but you're dozing. And you're sort of sitting there, and I'm listening. Always listening. I can hear things crashing, things moving around. You know, it's sort of in a little wood. This place is like a, a mini lake in a mini wood. 
Get on the outskirts of New Longville. Strike me on Keynes. It's, it's amazing. It's mad. So I'm sitting here. I'm just sitting here. Right here. Beep. You know when you sort of think, hang on, what's that? I'm up now. I'm up. I'm at the door. I'm fucking head out the bit. I'm like, boom. I'm out looking out. You know when you're right, right and it stopped. I'm thinking, what's that? And it's gone. It is gone. My old top, my left, that right hand rod on the margin, spending around, and it's just going raw. And so I've grabbed it, banged into it, and it's gone. <laughs> Nothing. Weed. Absolutely. It's like, whoa, my God. How does that happen? Jesus. Jesus. First night, forgotten pit. What was that? What was that? Was it a tent? Was it a car? What was it? Anyway, other rods out, and I've. <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Knight. Not the lake went dead. No noise. No nothing. It's quiet, quiet, and it was just absolutely quiet. I couldn't hear a fucking thing. No, that's right. I heard. I, I, yeah, I didn't hear nothing. Woke up. Woke up as you do. So I was really eager. So it's like five o'clock. Well, I didn't sleep because I was so excited that what was I going to see? What? What? No one's down it. It's all overgrown. It's crap everywhere. Who? What's going on here? What is going to be here? Anyway, so I've then woken up. I'm creeping up a bit. Really. Quiet. So. I don't want to burst out that bivvy. Or that, that, I, I just want to some tweak in the door. Peering over. See if anything's down there. There wasn't. What there was? Weed. I could not believe it. It was choked. Choked with weed. So much weed. So much weed to the point. My hook had the bread on it. On top of a bit of weed. On top of a bit of weed. Sitting in the air. I don't know how I got that run. Maybe it was a duck. I don't know. But I do not know how that, that that went. But I heard it. When that went, screaming, I heard something roll in the weed. So I'm sure it was, sure. I think it was an old tench. But anyway. So then it dawned me. I'd sat all night basically sitting on top of a weed. So, you know, I, I rolled all my... All, all, next day, I put my rods in. Had a good look round. And what it was, is because it was so weedy at the time, the fish were moving and created channels underneath it. So every time they moved, the weeds, the, the big layers of weed were going... You know when they, they sort of like wavier. Anyway, so that was it. So that was it. All right, I've had my little bit of fun. I need to make a plan. The plan is this. I need to stop making an access to this lake. So then I went out. I got myself a machete. And I just went to town on the path. So I just chopped and hacked and chopped and hacked. All the way around the lake. Literally, must have been three or four days. The kids come. The missus come. We're all in there. Wellies and just mess everywhere. I mean, we're not even interested in the fishing. What we're doing, we're just cutting a path. Cutting a path. We've got a path through. Finally, we had a path. So we've cut this path all by hand. Days. I was in, it was the rain. Some people were walking past me, like this little, this little tow path that goes round just beside the lake for the villagers to go up to the, um, to go up to uh, the, the fields beyond where they sometimes walk the dog, dogs. And it's me hanging out of a tree, vest on, pissing down rain. I'm hanging out, just trying to hack toward this branch or to get it to drop because need that little bit more space. I'm trying to see what's going on. So eventually, um, after a bit of time, uh, the, the trees were slightly thinned, and you know you could. It's got sort of wintry time was coming on. The weird it'll start dying down, and it's weird it's like because one minute it'll be absolutely cram packed with fish, every fish everywhere. You can't breathe for fish. I throw a loaf, of, a slice of bread on top of the wall, and the fish are on it. They were flapping and moving. It's like piranhas fizzing at the bottom of it. Literally tip 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 everywhere. It's like they were just coming and take it left, right, side. I swear sometimes they were just jumping out of the air and the land. It was absolutely nuts. And this was um, often thrown in the middle of the lake amongst the weed. So then I started to rake it. Made a rake in it, started making holes. When I started making holes, I thought, right, we've got some sort of organisation now. I've got a slight little route to it. I've got the lease in it. We're insured. I've made my plan over the years. Uh, I've, I've took my abuse from social media, but I do not care. I do not care what people think. This is my place. My bit of paradise. And if no one ever comes here, I am not bothered. It is my little piece of paradise. For me and my family and anyone that knows me wants to join me down here. It was there. It was there. There's fish in it. I don't care if they're this big. This big. I'll add a few more. You know, I don't care if it's not the biggest lake in the world. The prettiest lake in the world. It was mine. But to me, it was everything about fishing. Didn't, didn't know what was in there. It had weed lines. Things were crashing. I'd had that take. I'd had that... <sighs> You know, it's absolutely nuts. Anyway, so basically after that, I, 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 I'd got a path. I'd, open, I'd done some raking. We started float fishing. That's how it began. You know, that, that's how it all started. We then got syndicate members in to help me clear it up a bit. 
that's all come on and come off and you know we, we, we it, it, it was never the guys were lovely I enjoyed all their company, lovely people. But because of work commitments and that's life, there was too much work to do for a small syndicate on their own. You know, they ain't got time. They, they want to fish and they want to catch. I, you know, I can appreciate that. You know, my syndicate guys, they were lovely guys. They really helped me out. But they wanted to fish and they wanted to catch. They paid the money, they wanted to catch and fish. And it was not easy down here. You could go days and days and days without even seeing a fish. It'd be dead. You wake up sometimes and you come down and you think, Every single fish in this lake is dead. There is not a fish in here. You think that's it? You think it's done? You think, what have I done? No. When you come here another day, and I'll be jumping and crashing and moving through the real life, and they were there. It's like, it, it was so hot and cold, you know? Um, got to know a guy on the road. Graham is now my bailiff. Absolute diamond of a gent. Really, really nice bloke. Told me the history. He said, how this used to be a not, you know, if this lake used to be a totally different shape, used to be like a pear drop. You know, the lake itself used to have, um, you, there was no trees where there are trees now, it was allotments. So the history started coming out. But that was the beginning, that was how I got the lake. That was my first little taste of the pit. And what made it sweeter, all the sweeter, was that one occasion I saw that big rusty common. People said to me, this used to have cats in, this used to have big commons in, this used to have... Uh, uh, I mean, up to late day, there, there was a big common. And there's photos of, of this beautiful common that is in there caught by the guys. The carp were dark. But there was a freeze, okay? And in this freeze, a lot of them died, apparently. I've been told it is mainly bream that died. They were floating on top and they all had it. A couple of big cats have been found dead. A few of the carp. But this lake's 12 foot deep in places, people. It's got big undercuts, red, the did reed beds that are at the moment currently even now four foot wide 13 foot long and eight foot um sorry four four meters wide 14 meters long eight meters no eight foot deep a big exaggeration but very deep but anyway you know, there's plenty of places for these things why if there's only two cats been found dead i'm sure there's more than two so now this is what got me going this is really what got me into it must have been the first year I had it. So I've been cutting away. This thing that's, everyone's coming and going. And we, we'd sort of, I made a little bit of a path. We had some raked out little some areas of swims. Um, dealt with all this, trying to, you know, work through the sill. And I'm on a budget of zero. On a budget of zero. I had no money coming in from this place. It was all evenings, mornings, weekends. Evening, mornings, weekends. That was it. Every day, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Normally on my own. Mornings, weekends, down there, working. And every step I took was a step forward. So I never looked back, always moved forward. I might have come down, took one tree down. That's one tree I've got to deal with. That's one tree further to what I need it to be. You know, I may have, you know, trimmed, cut, cut a bush down. That's one less bush I'm dealing with. So now I'm one tree, one bush forward. Then I'm going, right, I've come down, I don't know, I've took a trolley out of the lake. Right, now I'm one tree, one bush, one trolley forward. So every day a step forward. Then by the end of the week, I'm looking back and thinking, Jesus Christ, Mark, you've done the load this week. Just keep pushing. Ignore ne negative, keep positive. And I just kept on banging on forward. Anyway, so basically this is going. So I've got my gap. And now I've got my gap. And I'm buzzing for this. I'm thinking, yes, I've got the gap. You know? So now I'm watching this fish swimming through. And I was on what was now peg five and six we just had enough space. Just had enough space to get a float out. So we've got a float out and bait in it. So I've took everything out of this lake now. We've got, you know, we're getting around there. It's starting to now look like a lake. We're insured. We're ready to rock and roll. I'm keeping, you know, this is like a year, we're like a year into it now. And um, my missus goes, Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm actually over another bit of bank doing a bit of work trying to, what's well, it, high bank now. Trying to take, make space. So I know I want that to be a special place for people to learn to fish. You know, get the kids with fishing on there and that. Anyway. My rafts on, on peg five and six. She goes, Mark, 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 come here, come here, look, 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 look. I'm going over there. I'm going, what, what? I'm going, What's the matter? I'm trying to do a dis over here. I can't keep moving backwards forwards. Have you caught a roach? Do you want me to unhook your roach? She goes, no, no, look, 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 look near my float. And I'm looking. I'm, what are you looking at? I can't see nothing. I can't quite see what she's making out. And I'm thinking, what you want about? I've got this big gap in the weed now. Um, it's, you know, it's not major weed, but, you know, it's lots of big weed. But it's enough for gap to, to see. And there's an oil drum. Uh, well, I thought it was a big old rusty oil drum. It drove me insane, honestly. I'm sitting there and it, I think, right, I've done all this now. And someone from whatever's thrown an oil drum, have I knocked it? And all I'm thinking is I need to get this out ASAP. It's going to rip my legs. It's just like a big barrel looking thing, all rusty. But it was hovering just below the surface. 
do you know, like, it, it weren't broke, it was floating below the surface. I'm thinking, odd. Um, and I'm looking, I'm looking, and, and, and then, then it broke the top. You know, the fin come up. And I've gone, it's a, it's a fish, it's a fish. And I'm going, it's a carp, it's a carp, it's a carp. I'm going, where's my phone, where's my phone, where's my pyro? I ain't got no pyro. So I'm going pull my phone out, you know, some, uh, an old iPhone, and trying to get the camera on it, and trying to film this fish. And all I saw of this fish, okay, was the back come out, it broke the surface. Turn, dived, gone. Read line split, that was it. And that was my first encounter of what I believe is one of the old big con big commons. And it was big. So that's how it began, okay? Pretty basic story. I saw it, I kept positive, I kept pushing. And that's just one story. I've got stories of pike, Supposed stories of cat. We've got more on Big Common, my stocking, all the other things I've seen in here. The stories, the myths, everything about this lake is amazing. And it's everyone's got a story to tell. Anyone that's watched this, anyone that knows Dimmick's Pit, will turn around and say, I've been down there, I've seen something, and I've been snapped up. And that is the buzz for me. Thanks for this to my little story. I'm going to do some more. And like I say, continued support from you guys has been amazing. And I hope this little introduction of how I got a lake helps you get you thinking. And if anything, I hope it makes you think about maybe chasing your dream of having your own lake or your dream of doing something that you really want to do. Don't let it stop you. Keep doing your steps forward. Like I said, one tree, one bush, one trolley, I'm moving forward. God bless. I'll wait to speak to you again.